Good morning, and welcome to St. Joan of Arc Parish as we prepare to celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter. We ask all who join us for Mass today to please follow both the CDC regulations and the Archdiocese of Chicago guidelines for social distancing. Those who intend to receive Holy Communion should use their hand sanitizing packets during the singing of the Lamb of God. Please stand for a moment of quiet preparation for our worshipful encounter with God and with one another. There is always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, welcome to Good Shepherd Sunday. So as we continue our Easter celebration and the resurrection of our Lord. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate these secret mysteries by asking for God's forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, you are risen from the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you have destroyed death forever. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have opened for us the way to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means was he saved? Then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified and whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the first letter according to St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. 
We do not know that when it, we do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This comment I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is called Good Shepherd Sunday. But if I could change the name, I would call it Good Sheep and Good Shepherd Sunday. So I would like to begin with something funny that I read two days ago. Uh, a policeman in a big city stops a man in a car with a sheep in the front seat. What are you doing with that sheep? He exclaimed, you should take it to the zoo. The following week, the same policeman sees the same man with the sheep again in the front seat, with both of them wearing sunglasses. The policeman pulls him over again. I thought you were going to take that sheep to the zoo. The man replied, I did. But we had such a good time, we are going to the beach this weekend. You know, relationship. So that man you know, formed a relationship with that sheep. Wherever he is, there is a sheep. Friends, last year, one of my friends from Italy went back home to Sicily. 
for vacation. So while he was driving in the countryside one afternoon, he saw a flock of sheep coming up the hill, but there was no shepherd. It was weird to him. So he stopped the car and realized that, that there was a dog in front of the sheep. First, he thought that the dog was in the wrong company. Then before crossing the road, the, the, the dog looked around to make sure no car was coming, everything was cleared. He crossed first, and then the sheep followed him. That was when he realized that the dog was the shepherd. The dog is trained you know, to lead the sheep. You know, he is trained to hear the voice of his sheep, and the sheep were trained to, to hear the voice and, and follow his lead as a shepherd. In other words, they have developed a relationship with each other based on love and care. And this is what shepherdship is about. It's about relationship. In today's gospel, Jesus, our shepherd, is clear about his mission for the salvation of the human race. He is clear about his job as the good shepherd. He is clear about the kind of relationship that must exist between the shepherd and the sheep. He said, my sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life. As you may or may not know, sheep are not the brightest animals. In fact, you know, they, they have a reputation for being quite stupid. You know, they are dumb and they are defen defenseless. They require a shepherd to take care of them. They require a shepherd to protect them. They require someone who will look after the smallest needs and who will lead them to where they need to be. So when the Lord called us sheep, it is right on target. We are needy people by nature and in need of God for everything. And since sheep are so needy, they form a special bond with their shepherd. You know, it's like, it's like a family, like the family right here. So they have the mom and dad, right? So they rely on them for, you know, for everything, you know, for food, for, for guidance. So they are like small sheep, and then they are the shepherd. So sheep required to get to know their shepherd. He knows the ones who are prone to wander. He knows the weaker ones. He knows the loyal ones. He even knows them all by name. The sheep, despite of their stupidity, becomes familiar with the voice of their shepherd. They know his sound. They know his smell. There is a bond between sheep and shepherd that is almost impossible to explain. Obviously, every single person on earth is a sheep because every single one of us was created in the image and likeness of God. But not all of us are willing to listen to the voice of our shepherd. And I think that's the difference between us and sheep. We are rebellious by nature. The sheep are not. Jesus tells us what kind of shepherd he is. He's a shepherd who knows his sheep. He loves and cares for them. He saves them from all kinds of damnation and danger. He gives them life. Now the question is, what kind of sheep are we? What kind of sheep are you? Are you a sheep who hears the voice of your shepherd, Jesus Christ? If you are a sheep who doesn't hear his voice, he says you are not his. Therefore, you will not follow him because you belong to another shepherd. You know, the Bible says you cannot serve two masters at the same time. You will either love one and despise the other. The same way you can have two shepherds. You will listen to one, not listen to the other. No, it's like, it's like a family with, with kids. You know, you know dad is saying one thing, and then mom is saying another thing. And then those poor kids, they say, okay, 
to which one should I listen to? So that's why it's important you know, for mom and dad to be always on the same page because they are the shepherd and the sheep depend on them to become shepherds in the future. You know, good sheep become good shepherds. Jesus, our shepherd, teaches us how to be good sheep and good shepherd because he leads his flock with love, care, mercy, compassion, wisdom. He is a good sheep because he listens to the voice of his father. He followed his comments. That's why he became the best shepherd ever and the lamb of sacrifice for the redemption and salvation of the human race. Our shepherd smells like us because he became one of us and dwelt among us. He loves his sheep so much he dies for them. As we celebrate the life that Jesus has given to us through his death and resurrection, let us imitate him so that we can become good sheep and also good shepherds. Now my question to you today, who are your sheep in today's society? What have you been doing to shepherd them, to care for them, to protect them? You know, before mass today, I was watching news. For two days, a group of migrants on the Mediterranean Sea, they were begging for help for two days. And nobody cared. So the Pope, the Pope said this morning, why nobody reached out to them? They could if they, want, if they wanted to. The Pope said, they are human beings like you. If there were somebody else, high profile, whole Europe will send their planes and to try to rescue them. So who are our sheep in this society? Jesus teaches us what kind of shepherd he is. He is the shepherd that makes sacrifices for his sheep, for everyone. He is the shepherd who satisfies the hunger, the thirst of his sheep. He is the shepherd who values and loves all sheep the same way. He is the shepherd who saves. He is the shepherd who gives life to his sheep. Many people in our society are like sheep without a shepherd. They are lost in the desert of this life. They don't know which direction to take with their lives. They feel hopeless. Their life is meaningless. They are hungry. They are homeless. Their lives are ravaged by wars and violence. Even in our own country, so many killing, so many deaths, so many hatred. So they are waiting for a shepherd like you and me to reach out to them, to bring them to good pasture, to lead them home to Jesus, to bring them to the wellspring of love and care that Jesus, the good shepherd, can offer them through our words and actions. Friends, by the virtue of baptism, all of us are called to be good sheep and good shepherds. But first, we must know our sheep and be willing to reach out to them. I'm the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know mine, and they know me. Now, my question is for you. Are you a good shepherd? Are you a good sheep? Do you know your sheep? Just some questions to, to think about as you make your way out of this church today. Amen. Let us stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God, God, life and life, true God from true God. 
be that in thy name, consubstantial of the Father, filling all things to me. For us, many for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was in kind of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the purchase pilot, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. And as the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is there at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. In his kingdom I have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, of the Father and the Son, and his other the Lord Christ, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for us of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Now, friends, with confidence, let's offer our prayers to God the Father. For the Church, under the patronage of St. Joseph, May the clergy and laity together show others to Christ by words and deeds, especially among the most vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, as we are called to support the annual Catholic appeal, may we be ready and willing to serve our community and the needs of all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the new leaders in our government, that God will help them to see within their hearts the deepest needs of those whom they serve and help them to develop good policies that will promote the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater respect for human life, that God will bring forth a greater appreciation for the gift of human life and give wisdom to those who are faced with difficult decisions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, and for Luz Bello and Dr. David Weary, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of the military, and for all who have asked for our prayers, We pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious and loving God, you are the source of our lives. We offer to you these our prayers. Please answer them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
day, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat his bread and drink his cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Until. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. John of Arc, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. To the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. As a reminder, please use your hand sanitizing packets if you intend to receive Holy Communion.
Friends, behold the love of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter the my room. Lord, you say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Friends, let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated because we have a few announcements. New Archdiocese rules allow us to do some things previously restricted due to the pandemic. We now need ushers to help with these tasks, uh, include welcoming parishioners, leading the faithful to communion, passing out bulletins, and taking up collection. We will train those who are interested. Please call Julie at the rectory or send her an email if you would like to become an usher. Our Catholic Charity Mother's Day collection is on May 9th. Mothers and children across Chicagoland have been especially burdened by the COVID-19 pandemic. Your donation to this collection helps feed, comfort, shelter, and care for the most vulnerable among us. Please plan to give to the Mother's Day collection in the next couple of weeks. And finally, as you always know, I've been pushing to have more people coming to Mass. So far, we are doing okay, but if you're watching on now, you can see we have a lot of you know, empty spots in the church. Please, if you can, next Sunday, surprise me. Uh, join us for the, for the celebration, you know, to break and share the, the bread uh, together. Please stand for final blessing. The Lord be with you. And may, may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended now. Go forth to love and serve the Lord.